Greetings to all of humanity. It's really a joy. It's my pleasure. It's my honor being always out there connected to nature and bringing to you this message of emancipation whereby I'm pointing you to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And that is why I want to speak to you today concerning the soul and the dark night of the soul and what your experience would be when you're going through the dark night of the soul. Now, as you know, I always quote from the Bible, but I teach that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. For the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history. And it was written symbolically. Therefore, it has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. From the beginning to the ending of the Bible, it's all a great psychological jammer and it all have to do with the human psyche. So that is what now brings me to the Garden of Gethsemane and showing you that the Garden of Gethsemane is speaking of your mind, just as the Garden of Eden is speaking of your mind also. And in this Garden of Gethsemane, it be a time whereby you're going through many things that is taking place in your life that seems to be very dark and gloomy. It would seem that everything is turning against you. Now, I want to share with you my personal experience of going through the darkness uh, of the soul or the dark night of the soul. Okay? And in that time, it seems like there wasn't any hope. I would have lost even my electricity had no light. And I was living alone. I didn't even have water. My water was cut. My light was cut. I was always broke. I was depressed. I was confused. My, my toilet wasn't even clean and I had totally forgotten there's such a thing as a toilet cleaner. The place was smelly. I was going through all of these things. The place was dirty. I was going through all of these things. Going through a time of great, great, great depression in my life. Looking for answers and couldn't find answers. Having left Christianity because I felt like I was stagnated. And I was just going around in circles. And I wasn't growing also. And I would have made up my mind that I'm not going to ever put my foot again in a church. No one has hurt me. No one would have done me anything. Okay, because many people normally believe that is what would have taken place when you start to speak your mind and start to be honest with yourself. But I would have tried all of the promises that are in the Bible that I was told to do these things. And God in return would do certain things to me and I wasn't seeing these things happening. And I was questioning all of these things because it would have been for a very long time and I would not have seen any results. Now, I'm saying all of this to say to you, okay, you might be going through a lot, a lot of things right now. And you fail to realize that you're going through the dark night of the soul. You might be confused. You might be upset. It might seem like everything is going against you. You may lose your job. All of these things are happening for you to have the experience of the darkness of the soul or the dark night of the soul. And this is that dark moment that you read of in the Bible in the Garden of Gethsemane. And you will be crying out and reaching out for help. And many a times, there isn't anyone around you to give you the right advice. There isn't anyone around you to give you what you're really seeking for or what you're looking for. But it's a road that we all must travel. And let me say this. Going through the dark night of the soul is what's going to bring you into light. Because you're going to come to realize that you have to go through the darkness 
before you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You have to realize by experience also that out of the darkness comes the light. You have to experience also what is grace or what is agape, godly love, unconditional love. Because when you experience the dark, the dark night of the soul, and you come out of the dark night of the soul, and you start seeing life from a different perspective, and start seeing life in light of your awareness and in light of your higher consciousness, then you would realize how important it is to enter into the darkness. And you realize out of the darkness comes the light. So my brother, my, my, my sisters, these are the troubles that you would face. And I'm just saying troubles for lack of word. In the Bible it is called Jacob troubles also. And you will go through these disturbing times to bring you to your higher self. Many of you can look back at your experiences now and embrace them because you realize those events are what brought you to this knowledge of self. And even now, you may know this truth, but yet you're facing a very dark moment. Everything seems to be going against you. I'm saying to you that there is hope because everyone must go through this kind of experience. You must know what it is, what it means to go through hell and to live in hell and to conquer death, hell and the grave and to say, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Each and every one of us must conquer our hell and rise up out of hell and live in heavenly places within our Christ self. That is why my brother and my sisters, you have to put the devil under your feet, which is your negative thinking, your negative thought patterns, and be in control of your mind. So you would vibrate out of hell into heaven. And that is why you are given the dark night of the soul experience, your Gethsemane experience, so you would be able to appreciate your Christ self, your higher self, your true essence. So, my brother and my sisters, I'm saying all of this to say to you, I didn't just come to this knowledge by just reading a book or anything as such. It was a lot of experience. It was a lot of troubled times that I would have gone through. But through it all, I remain truthful to myself. You see, a lot of people are not being truthful to themselves, especially religious people. For example, how could you be going to church, paying your tithes, paying your offering for more than 10 years, and you're still living in dirt poor poverty? You're still living in mediocrity. And there's a promise given to you in Malachi chapter 3 and verses 10 that the preachers are using to say that the windows of heaven will be opened up to you and pour you out a blessing, that you do not have room enough to store that blessing. And you're not seeing that blessing in your life. If you're not being honest and true to yourself, then you would never come to these kind of experiences of knowing who you are. So my brother and my sisters, all I'm saying to you, you have to embrace the things that are happening in your life that you can't understand at this moment. But as long as you have that strong desire to know what is your purpose, to know what is your calling, to know what you've been placed here to do, you will get the answer in the right time. So, my encouragement to you is to endure and to believe because everything's going to work out well. For all things work together for good to them who would love and embrace their God self, their true self, their higher self. So even now as I speak to you, there's a lot of things that are happening around the world because of this pandemic and because of the agenda that they have to keep you in the matrix and to put you to keep you still asleep in the dream unaware of who you are and why you're here because they 
want to always keep you in mental slavery and the system is set up like that to keep you in mental slavery. Even until all of these events are taking place right now in the earth and many people are saying that it is the fulfillment of scripture and it is the last days we are living in and this is the time of the great falling away and all of these foolishness. You have to be strong and you have to look no other place but look within yourself for all of the answers that you are seeking for. Because when you realize that it is your thoughts that is creating your reality and your personality, you will understand how the mind works. And when you understand how the mind works, you will understand that every manifestation is a fulfillment of a prophecy. So money is a fulfillment of a prophecy. The aeroplane is the fulfillment of a prophecy. The, the motor car is the fulfillment of prophecy. And money is the fulfillment of prophecy. And all these people who always talk about the last days and fulfillment of prophecy, why is it they still working for money and they still accept and use money? Isn't money the fulfillment of prophecy? Everything that happens is the fulfillment of a prophecy. That is why, my brother and my sister, you can prophesy your life how you want it to be. Because your words will not return unto you void, but it must accomplish that which you send to and prosper anything where to you send it, you can speak your life into being. So, my brother and my sisters, you have to know these things. As many people would have many dark experiences in this time. But when you know of the, of the dark night of the soul, then you can rejoice because you know this too shall pass and you shall see the light and you will find out that this light is within you so with that being said my brother my sister this is just a words of encouragement that i'm bringing to you to encourage you concerning whatever you may go into that it could be the dark night of the soul that you are experiencing and it seems that there is no way and it seems like there is no hope but i'm saying to you that there is hope because when all of what you're going to is finished and you behold your true self and you behold the face of God, you would bless that place. You would bless all of your experiences and then you will have a better understanding how to deal with everything in the world because you have come to a higher place of consciousness. So with that being said, my brother, my sister, I want to thank you very much. I want to say to you, if this is the very first time that you're listening to me, what I'm saying makes sense to you, really resonating with you, and you haven't subscribed already, I'm encouraged to subscribe, to like, to comment, or uh, to share this video. So with that being said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.